I don't know why I'm having problems with this song. And this is- this is- oh, shit! First take. Not sixth take. Okay? Pinky promise. <laughs> What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday with Ola 146. That was not the sixth take, but how I, ugh, fuck. That was not the sixth take, I promise. Also, like always, I forgot about the yellow crown. You would think that this is something uh, that uh, maybe I should make a checklist of things to do before I start this Ola, but apparently apparently uh, that's too much for me. Oh my god, people, how are you doing? What? I want to talk about the Chug project. Hello. The Chug Project. I'm terribly sorry that I'm talking a lot about the Chug Project, but you know, there's a there's a simple reason for this. This is where it's gonna be exactly. So Chug Project on Spotify or streaming platforms. I'll put a link up here. Okay. Uh, what was? I don't even know what I was supposed to say about that, but it's up there. It's the Chug Artist the Chug Project. It it doesn't feel easy today. Some days things come natural. Some days. It just feels so f***ing unnatural, you can't believe it. Sometimes it feels like, you know, it's like you, you're doing it for the first time again, and you're, you're just not... You, don't, you just don't get a good flow, it's just like that song in the intro. Not a typically advanced song or anything, but I, that took like six tries, you know, to get one part wrong. Uh, see? I can't even say right or wrong. Anyways guys, the news. Or might I say, the absolute lack of news. Holy f Are we seeing a trend where I'm just complaining about news being vague and shitty nowadays? Welcome to summer. There is a little bit of cool news though, this week. Creed announces a reunitation. A reuniting. Like, they're announcing a reunition? A reunion. <laughs> shit. Oh my god. And I'm just so inc- Oh shit, I need to. Oh, Screen saving! So Creed have announced that they're reuniting for a gig next year called Let's Go Back to the Summer of 1999. July 19 next year. All we know so far is that the band website has been updated so that say that they're taking things back to the summer of 99 alongside with a sign up for an email list. Uh, check that out here and get stoked? Question mark? Okay. It says this website is not safe. So there you have it, the Creed official website is uh, stated as a non-secure website. Maybe they need to update their credentials, uh, or whatever. And Mark Tremonti is basically saying that uh, for this to happen, the Scott Stapp world and the Mark Tremonti world needs to align. It's not been that easy. I mean, obviously both parties have been incredibly busy. And you know, Mark Tremonti has all these f***ing bands, man, they're insane. He has his solo band Tremonti and also has Alter Bridge, which are hugely successful. I mean, maybe not at the same level as Creed, but almost, man. If a promoter would say, hey, we want to do a huge Creed tour, I have to bypass all the stuff we're working on at the moment, so we just have to wait until the time is right. Well, it seems that the time is right right now, and my question is, I wonder how much they're getting paid for this. It has to be an insane amount for this show. It has to be up to, you know, a couple millions of dollars, something like that, for this to happen. I mean, it's insane. So, incredible news for Creed fans. So, incredible news for Creed fans all across the world in the United States of America, where they're gonna play. Animals as leaders, guitar tech Dave Cohen passes away after show incident. 
Cohen was also the luthier behind Equilibrium guitars. Dave has passed away after what sounds like an incident and a recent counterparts show. On Sunday night I was at a counterpart sh show. Guitar tech of Animals as Leader was in the pit enjoying the show when unexpectedly things took a turn. I posted about it earlier. I asked the venue what his condition was that sent me this post. As for what happened, he took an elbow to the face, lost consciousness and never regained it. Paramedics tried all they could. They performed CPR and used defibrillators after he was having a seizure. It was very sad to see. Rest in peace, prayers to his friends and family. So, basically a victim of a pit. Right there. Animals as leaders has commented on the situation. He was an amazing person, loved by all who met him. He was a wise and center being, a true inspiration person to be around. We are thankful for the experience and the memories we shared with Dave. Our condolences go out to his friends and family. A soul is lost and never forgotten. Uh, shit, man. That is so fucking tragic right there. You go out to enjoy a metal show or a show in general and that's how you kind of end up. You know, there's a reason nowadays why I'm not in the mosh pits anymore, man. I mean, I see what happens in there. There's good mosh pits, don't get me wrong. I see a lot of good mosh pits out there where people are helping each other. It's not that violent, but then you go and see these where people are fucking throwing fists and elbows. And there's like this macho culture, like, oh, well, if you can't handle the pit, well, huh, huh, you're not a man enough or something like that. But I just see people f making wrong kicks and hits and... F Dude, what the f is up with that? That shit is fucking dangerous. And see, one guy died. Stop that shit. Help each other up, enjoy the music, and seriously, to people that are doing that, fuck off. Have some fucking respect for people and please enjoy the music, okay? Thank you. Cora Taylor completely backed up Lars Ulrich in Metallica's Napster battle. Were you even born when the Napster battle happened? Huh? <laughs> Back in the early 2000s, people started downloading MP3s online from bands. And, you know, we had Napster. What else did we have? Like Direct Connect and Hotline. There were so many... Uh, Lime? Was it Lime? And it was kind of like... It was going haywire there for a while. Where it's just like... It went out of control. And music was just everywhere basically. I'm gonna admit I did download music myself. However, I was a fan of buying music and buying CDs. I've been doing it since like the mid 90s where I went to, you know, record stores uh, on Saturdays and I bought CDs and all that. So the albums that I wanted to have, those are the ones that I purchased. But if there were like bootlegs and shit or live shows, I could find them on Napster and shit. And that was that it was amazing for that to find stuff that you never heard before. And uh, you know, you can get it for Napster, but obviously the full albums were on there. And uh, Lars Ulrich took a stand and he got a lot of shit for it. Anyways, Corey is saying, I completely backed uh, Metallica drummer Lars Ulrich, who spearheaded the Napster battle, man. We're seeing the aftermath of it, to be honest. I mean, obviously, I have to work with streaming, DSPs and whatnot, but it doesn't mean I like it. The odds are so stacked against the artists that less and less people are able to make a living at this, man, unless you hit the jackpot. And even when you do hit the jackpot, you're paid peanuts. And it's revolting in a lot of ways. I'm still waiting for the legislation to actually go into effect, but it's been appealed so many times by all the DSPs that we may never see the right of way. When all of this happened back in the day, you know, where music got digitalized and put online, I think that the, the record labels, they weren't ready for it. But it was the start of what would be the model for today, which is streaming music, obviously. So I think it needed to happen for the labels and, you know, people to step up and create Spotify and all that. Is it the right thing to do for the artists and bands? In my opinion, I agree. I don't think that the artists are getting paid enough from streaming services. However, it is the way to go forward and, you know, for the internet generation, man. Corey goes on, the math doesn't work and I'm tired of talking to people about it because the math doesn't work. They're paid even less than the old radio structure. At least you could make a goddamn living back then. That's why I commend these younger bands that are bypassing the label structure. And they're going, I'm not gonna let them collect everything. Honestly, it's the only way to make DSP works in your favor is to cut out the middleman because that's where all the money is going. There it is. He's saying it right there. Labels are not needed. You cut out the middle hand, you get to keep everything for yourself, even though it's still, you know, too little. In my opinion. As an artist today, you need to take control of all your stuff and make sure that there aren't really that many middle hands. I mean, look at what I'm doing right here. You know, where we started printing t-shirts ourselves. Basically, you know, cutting out middle hands, no labels. I'm doing all the marketing myself, obviously through social medias and all that. We have that at hand, which is a good thing. I mean, social media, uh, it's free. 
you know, for us to use and we can promote ourselves on social media. So we basically come to the point where, you know, anyone can make it, but you know, the people that make it are earning less. So, you know, we're kind of meeting in the middle a little bit, except if you're like a super successful artist where they're just up here somewhere. A lot of things that uh, Corey is saying in this article, I absolutely agree with, but it's just a way of the future, man. We just have to adapt. I mean, I would love it too if the artist could get paid more from streaming services and whatnot, but... Hello. One band that is doing extremely well with this and, uh, you know, making their own audience and, uh, it, you know, interacting with their audience is Artspire and they had a crowdfunding for a video a couple of months back and they raised 80,000 Canadian dollars. How much is that? I have no idea. They crowdfunded all of this for one video and they just released it and it's a pretty brutal video. I probably have to censor all of this, but it's really freaking cool. And you can definitely see that they forked out a lot of money on this production right here. There's like, you know, Gorders, uh, these incredible makeup faces and all that. And it, it's an incredible video, man. Take a look at this. Straight out of Alien or something like that, you know? Artspire are doing this incredibly right, in my opinion, where they, they engage way more with their fans than their, their, their audience. They basically built up their own audience. They are super willing to support what they're doing. You know, seeing that they uh, get crowdfunded for $80,000, it's, it's insane. So conclusion to all of this, go support your favorite bands, man. Buy a t-shirt at least. American Airlines loses $20,000 of Necrogoblin gear, offers them a free luggage as a replacement. What? Another week, another nightmare airline story. This time it's all about American Airlines losing roughly $20,000 of Necrogoblin's gear and then slapping them in the face with the offer of free luggage. Necrogoblin made a post on Twitter. Of course, American Airlines responded with a can, let's help type of message, followed by a nothing burger of a direct message that ultimately said, talk to someone else. <laughs> then came the friggin' insane offer to give the band free luggage in place of $20,000 worth of gear. That's nice. Last tweet from Necrogoblin. So after we file a proper claim for the damaging of thousands of dollars of our gear, American Airlines has offered to compensate us with free luggage bags. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Shit, man. That sucks ass. Oh, uh, I guess that wasn't that bad when it comes to the news. The news. All right, it's time for me to replace this desk. I bought a new standing desk so I can save my ass a little bit. So I'm gonna start by building up my new desk and then I'm gonna remove and disconnect everything from the setup right here, which is gonna be a lot. There's a lot of cable management. And then I'm gonna replace the desk, build everything up again. So uh, wish me good luck. Holy shit, look at that. It's assembled and ready. This is amazing for my back. I can feel it right now. This is actually, what? Holy shit, 113. Oh my god, this is fucking perfect, guys. Look at this. Play my guitar, yeah. So all I need to do now is disconnect everything on the other desk and move this desk there, so... Ha! Also, I notice now that the desk is slightly wider than the other desk. And also, you have the uh, 
you have the speaker stands on the actual desk where I had individual speaker stands before, right here. So I'm gonna save space, but I'm also gonna get a wider working desk area. Look at that. And also I got this. It's uh, fake leather. <laughs> Look at this. This is the old desk completely disassembled. You know, all the stuff is gone. I actually didn't mark anything up because I wanted to completely rework my whole situation here. So I'm gonna start routing everything from, uh, you know, the absolute start to finish. And that's gonna be good because then I can maybe customize, you know, cable lengths and stuff like that for cable management to be a little bit better than it was before. Because as I've had this studio environment, you know, you constantly add stuff to, the uh, to the desk and all that and eventually the you know the backside with all the cables is just a, a rat's nest glasses on. Let's go, baby. So, to get an even cleaner setup, I figured I would mount up a bunch of uh, my computer peripherals, peripherals and the actual computer underneath the desk. So I found these shelves at IKEA, obviously because I'm a Swede, uh, that are 20 bucks and I painted them black with spray paint and now I'm gonna mount them up like this. So it's basically creating a shelf underneath the desk. So one on each side. So I can have hard drives and shit on the computer and it falls along with the desk. Very nifty and uh, sometimes, you know, makes you feel smart that you find solutions like this. I just mounted the top board to the desk and now I'm gonna mount the bottom board with my penis. Dude, what? Look how clean that is. And then, you know, I got rid of the computer from the desk itself. Isn't it like the smallest things that make you satisfied? You find something in Ikea and you know, you make such a good solution. That's just so satisfying. <laughs> All right, holy shit. I think I'm done. Take a look at this right there. Holy shit space, man. So the only thing I have left and uh, why I haven't fixed this yet, the, it's the cable management down there. Don't, don't pay attention to that. That's gonna be fixed, okay? I promise. <laughs> no, but I'm waiting for a couple of extra uh, shorter cables that I can use from some units just to make the cable management a little bit easier. Uh, as of right now, it looks like this, but I'm gonna gather all of that up. Uh, most of the equipment stands up here on the shelves right there. So I have the computer and the extra hard drives and all that over there. And then I have some other plans for what to put over here. So yeah, man, dude, I'm pretty stoked. The only thing that I'm, I'm uh, trying to fix right now is like the lighting situation. As you can see, it's incredibly bright here where I have to adjust the, uh, you know, this lamp a little bit and then, 
you know, there, there's all you know, finicky things that you need to fix. But other than that, dude, how clean is this setup right here? And I can stand. How about that? Fuck yeah, man. Adventures with Ola. <laughs>at this ola england is standing straight and up hello how how tall is ola by the way oh, oh shit oh i guess i have to reevaluate the light right here because my face uh, you can't see my face right here unless i'm standing here anyways there's a good reason why i got this whole setup obviously because of my hip and uh, ass problems you know sitting down for long hours over a guitar playing and writing music and working here i'm just not capable of doing that anymore so getting this set up uh, was very necessary you know i'm getting old i need to switch things up i need to be able to switch positions here and there and you know keep my body uh, going it is becoming better i must say because i've been walking a lot and i'm exercising having solutions like this where i don't sit for hours on end on a chair you know hunker over the guitar that will most definitely help so awesome i can recommend it to anyone that has a sore ass <laughs> all right a terrible spot you can fall down <laughs> you can fall down be careful okay, okay yeah, goodbye <laughs> dude you're just by the cliff it's so far down be careful okay take it easy <laughs> look at that beautiful view We're at something called the Furka Pass, which is uh, 2,490 meters above sea level. And uh, on a good day, this view would be amazing, I guess, but we have an overcast today, so that sucks ass. But yeah, the drive here was absolutely gorgeous, and uh, obviously, you know, it's so dynamic here in the Alps. It's incredible. But uh, you can't see that right now because clouds and shit. Ugh. Ah!
Today we're at the Chocolate Museum of Lint in Zurich. Holy shit. History is good and all, but where the fuck is chocolate? <laughs> Time to test some chocolate. are alive with the sound of Arschloch. Now we're gonna ride this egg, egg train up the mountain. Look at it go. Oh, so they get at the bottom of the mountain. Alpen Milch. What did you say? Come on! Oh, <laughs> oh no! It's really high up. <laughs> oh, I, I kind of agree. It kind of sucks, but the view is beautiful. Back to safety. Last evening of this whole trip right here. Tomorrow we're leaving for home. But uh, holy shit, look at this. It's breathtaking basically. Huh? Kids, how was the trip? Yeah. Bro. Yeah, that was good. Awesome. Awesome trip. Awesome. Incredible view. Awesome. awesome. Great way to round off the trip. And that, my friends, was the last part of the vacation vlog from this summer. Uh, I'll have the whole segment up on my second channel if you want to go check that out. Also, if you want to see the full desk unboxing, I also have that on my second channel. With that said, this was the end of Sunday with Ola 146. Remember, the Chug Project is back up on all streaming platforms. Or if, if you're into Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Google Music, Amazon Prime. Who... <sighs> These nuts. Yes, go follow the Chug Project on there. I'm putting a link up here. You can go follow that, okay? Because there's news coming soon, okay? <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into the premiere, guys. I love you and see you next time. Next time, I'm gonna rock out, man. Standing on Sunday with Fall Life Bank. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you next time. You gotta be on your ass.